And we're back with some more oxygen not included. Spaced out edition. Uh, today, we're immediately going to drill down here and wall in this oil biome. There's actually a, a break in the abyss light here and that heat is leaking in. We need to see, cap that off right now. So, time to dig. With all of this sealed off, next step, food. We need food to actually survive here. Uh, we've got a bunch of nutrient bars here, 13 kilos left. But we're soon going to be bringing in a second duplicate uh, from our home planet. And when we do that, it's going to increase our food needs. So maybe let's get started on that now. Actually, how long is this left? 84% charged. Cool, we can bring in another duplicate soon enough. I am never opening up that cryo tank. Ever. God knows what's in there. I mean... There might be a good duplicate, there might be a bad duplicate, who cares, we have a bunch of super dupes, so we don't need to worry. Now, next up, we need to find the other, this is the uh, the teleporter, but that's the input, we need to find the output. From what I can see, this is quite a large asteroid, it goes all the way over to there, so I think we're going to have to start scouting left to find that. Uh, the reason being, I want to get our hands on the input so that we can start sending oxygen here, and why is there a whole bunch of natural gas down there? For a second there I thought that was sour gas, never mind, never mind, it's fine. Yeah, so let's start moving left. After a brief bit of a detour to maybe dig up a little bit more of this biome for some seeds, I think it's time we can bring in our next duplicate. What's the charge at? Yep, we are good to go. Next thing, person to send over is Keymaker. Namely because Keymaker has the mecha... Uh, they can be upgraded to be a mechatronics engineer. Nice. And for some reason it puts me over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, we've got two duplicates over here. This will make things much simpler. Oh, and we might want to put in another bed. Uh, one more bed there. One more dining table there. And I don't know if they've changed it. It used to be uh, duplicates wouldn't lose track of their old beds and dining chairs. So, mm, make that a six. We're going to need those soon. Otherwise, someone's going to be going to sleep on their ground. Uh, as well as that, we swept up all the food. I was leaving all the muckroot lying about the place, and uh, the hatches were having a field day on it. So we've uh, deprived them of their snacks. No, it would appear they're not listed. Or they're still listed on the other planet. Oh well, at least we now have two duplicates. This will make things much faster. Uh, we'll let them finish digging that out. Uh, hopefully they should find a few more seeds so we can plant some more mealwood. I'd prefer not to get into bristle blossoms because that requires light and power, unless we want to start messing around with shine bugs, which I'd prefer not to. Uh, once they're on board, let's start digging across this way and finding the input so we can get ourselves some oxygen. They actually dig pretty fast. Now, where is it? Ah, there it is. Supply teleporter output. That's where our oxygen is going to come in. Uh, we'll dig across a bit here and then we're going to dig straight down. This is going to take a little too long. Reason being the carbon dioxide is just we're not getting enough oxygen in here. So uh, it's time to put together a quick oxygen diffuser. We'll throw in a quick battery, manual generator, some algae in the oxygen diffuser, and next thing you know, we'll be uh, ooh, sorry, we'll be on our way to having at least enough oxygen pressure to get down here and plug this in. And there they go, doing it again. Uh, with that activated, that'll start pumping oxygen in here, and we can disable all of that junk. This is just basic. This is pumping oxygen from our home planet. Uh, let's see, we got some overflows here hooked up to that, and there it goes. That means we only have to worry about food now. Oxygen should be taken care of. We'll have to run some gas pipes and all that, but that means all of this can go. And next up, we'll just pump the oxygen in here, though we're going to need some more seeds. For some reason, we don't have enough mealwood. Then we'll just set up a quick kitchen, some basic power. We're going to have to get solar. But yeah, I think that's most of the main basics of it done, and I wonder what that is. Hmm. Damn it. Oh, that's right. You can go to the star map now, and if you click on the planet you're on, it will tell you what's on it. So we've got liquid sulfur, a chlorine gas vent, and oil reservoirs. So that's either liquid sulfur or a chlorine vent we're leading with. Oh, and this is the other planet we've discovered, though we haven't gone to it yet. The uh, the marshy world, the one that's going to give us our reed fiber and also our pips and our trees. All of those we want, but not yet. First, we're going to take care of this planet. Next up here is to run that oxygen throughout the colony. It should be a fairly straightforward process, even if you only have two dupes to do it all. With that all done, ah, it's just a big weight off my mind. Don't have to worry about oxygen for a while. Actually, how's our old base doing? Uh, old base is doing fine. Teleporter at 72%. I'm just making some space here for ranches. We're probably going to end up getting some stone hatches in. Now, there's been a, a lot of talk about plug slugs and how useful they are and whether or not they're worth it. Now, someone brought up a very good point. What if you fed plug slugs stone? What if you could? Like, would that make plug slugs better? And then I realised even if I could feed them stone to produce their power and hydrogen, I would still prefer stone hatches, because stone hatches give you coal, 
And that coal is, well, really, really useful because you can store it up and use it later, as opposed to these plug slugs where you have to store the power they produce at night in batteries or it's lost. I don't... I, I really see stone hatches as being way better than them, at which point, if stone hatches are that much better than them, why ever ranch them? Especially considering you can get hatches here on this planet. Uh, just uh, let me finish this up here. I want to actually just finish off the last of this gas and then we're going to start storing up the seeds. I want to take all the seeds out of here because I want to turn this into our liquid storage tank or water tank. And I don't want our water tank to be, you know, full of seeds that it will end up with Paku in it at some point. And when the Paku end up in it, they'll eat all the seeds. So let's uh, store those away safely now. With the seeds gone, let's throw together ourselves a little quick water tank here. We just want to get all of that water out of the way so that we can... What the hell? No, yeah, I'm doing some digging back home just to make sure we we stay on top of everything, though I need to be more careful. I, I hope we don't get to a vacuum here. Yeah, we'll sort that out later. However, before we can get to filling this water tank and getting on with our day, we have a minor issue again. Another break in the abyssalite down here. I'm checking out the temperatures and you can see it's it's rather toasty. Something's broken right there. So we're going to dig down and see what it is. But I'm guessing, yeah, like, oh, you can just see it there. Igneous rock directly from the oil biome. That's... Not good. We need to seal that in and prevent that heat from leaking as soon as possible. This is a much worse break than I thought. Uh, the, okay, this is a break here, but there's also this abyss light here is, has touched some ethanol, and now we have 150 degree ethanol gas floating around the place. That's, that's really bad. Uh, we're just going to probably have to wall in a whole bunch of this. Uh, we're going to have to stay away from anything that's... What? Let's just start doing it sort of like this. Uh, great. Yeah, somewhere like that. Uh, yeah, give me a minute here. We'll dig across here and just seal that in. We should be able to get that in before this gets to scalding territory. Ooh, it'll be tight. Oh, that reminds me. We should be able to bring in another duplicant right about now. Where are we? Is the teleporter charged? Yes, it is. Please step up. Wait, wait. First, we'll have Fruit Loops do a skill scrub. We want to send them through where they're not so... Quite so... High maintenance. Nine morale is not that bad, but I would prefer to be able to reskill them as necessary, and then we can swap them over to their uh, required abilities later. Uh, for the time being, I think we should still be able to get through here without too many scaldings. Almost finished up here, but Fruit Loops is ready to teleport. So we'll finally have our third duplicate over here. I think we're going to stop at three for now. That should be plenty. We've already got them in a bed, though they do have to be assigned. We've already got them in a mess table. We'll have to be assigned. And the toilets over here, we've upgraded them slightly, so we've got two of each. That should work out well. Now we just got to finish sealing this in, and then we can actually get around to finishing this tile. It's been kind of frustrating the amount of abyssalite breaks that have kind of slowed us down here. This area is pretty much done, and I think... We were really lucky right there. We managed to just nip it right there as tight as we possibly could and save as much of this biome as we could. I mean, did we need all that, all of it? Probably not, but it's nice to have it if we can keep it. Now over here, we're going to start filling up this liquid tank. We want to core out this area so we can put in a little mini base. We want to have, say, four beds, a little small uh, dining room, some bedrooms, a kitchen, all that. We want to make this uh, a nice little livable base for our duplicants, preferably a size four base. And that way we can sort of copy paste this to all the the next bases. And it was pointed out in the comments that, yeah, do that. If I, if we go with a sort of a, a modular base that we can copy paste to the next areas, it'll make uh, the fruit future expansion even easier. To free up all this space, we just need to get rid of the water. It's the, it's the age old problem you deal with whenever you're dealing with uh, Ani. You want to get all the water into the tank and the least amount of effort it takes you to get it, the better. Now, if we just dig across like that, that should free all that water and that should... Well, okay, we'll have to do a little bit of smart deconstruction here and get rid of some of the gunk. We can brick that in, force the water out, and soon we'll have all the water in this area in one tank and our duplicants will have free building, rain over building in this area. We could get around to food and building the base right now, but there is some water up here that needs extraction. We might as well put that in now. Uh, no, no, don't go that way. I just mopped that. Ugh. Fine, fine. We'll we'll dig that out. Did you rush it? Most of it should flow down there anyway. We'll go out here and we'll extract the last of the water from the top of the map. That will mean we have everything cleared. Just about. You know, the second map is a lot bigger than I remember. Dear Lord, the amount of digging we've had to do here. Uh, though... Yeah, it feels like it's a lot chunkier. I mean, it's not as big as the original maps we started out with. The DLC definitely has smaller maps in general, but this one feels a lot chunkier than the last time I went through it. Maybe it's just my imagination, though. 
Uh, we're going to go up here, release that water. Once that's done, we should be golden. There's a, a complete vacuum over there we're going to avoid. And we've discovered there is a vent over here. In fact, I think there's a few vents lying around the place. Uh, there's another vent over here that we haven't tapped into. I believe there's a third one somewhere else. Yep, yeah, there it is. There's a third vent over there. So we have options. Now, we don't know what all of them are, of course, but we'll find out when we get to them. Uh, for the time being, though, I do want to find out what's in that one. That one we can easily access. Well, maybe after we do food. We managed to fill in this entire area with oxygen. It's now pressurized. We put in the, uh, we extended our gas pipes on a little bit. Uh, at the same time, we're going to put in some, uh, a little bit of power production here. Uh, the reason being is we want a rock crusher. Yeah, the reason we need the rock crusher is so we can grind up some metal to do our kitchen properly. We want to get in some automation in our kitchen, so that's going to require us to have some conveyor loaders and such like. And the reason we're going to put in the wire as well is we want to power this conveyor loader so we can start throwing through some of the hatch eggs. I want to start sending hatch eggs back home to the home planet just because that's where we're going to be doing our ranching. This place is supposed to be an outpost. When this team is finished here, they're going to leave. One of the wonderful bonuses of having maxed out our dupes, they've all got 20 in machinery, so they can smash up copper really really quickly this makes this so much simpler and anyway, with that done uh, we need to get down here and put in uh, the power wire for wait wait oh how have i missed that that's another abyssalite break that's that's two touching biomes right we need to get down there immediately uh cancel all other projects people um yeah we need to get down here and start sealing this in right now minor change in plan here uh, turns out this oil down here is only 60 degrees, 17 places. 70 will scald us, but 60 is actually livable with? So we're going to try and dig down here and put in some insulated tiles. If we could, say, get our hands on all that oil that's down there, that's only, I mean, it's 700 kilos of tile. That's, that's more than enough to make a lot of plastic. We could do an awful lot with that much oil. Um, yeah, let's just see what we can manage. If we get any scaldings, we have some some backups, and uh, we don't have really any strong unions for the duplicates, so this could work out okay. While we're at this as well, we're going to deliver a few eggs over to the other side. Uh, they should pop out the other end, and we now have access to hatches. Perfect. Three hatching eggs. It'll just mean we can bring up our hatch farms over that end. In fact, I think three is more than enough, so we're just going to turn that off. The rest of them can show up as needs be. Oh, I'm just making sure none of them are trying to bring any at the moment. If they start bringing something and you disable it, it has a tendency to crash the game, or it used to at least. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can't wall this in without getting any more without getting any scaldings. A little bit of heat stroke all around, but we've managed to acquire enough oil to well create enough plastic, get cooling going, do a whole bunch of stuff if we really wanted to. Feels kind of cheating, but. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go get the reed fibre first, but we might maybe uh, start getting plastic out a little bit earlier than we anticipated. Before I seal this up and hopefully all the nasty heat with it, we're going to do a quick sweep in here just to get rid of all the gunk. Uh, if we... oh, I don't think we care about the stuff outside, we can worry about that later. It's just I really don't want to have to break back in and get here anytime again soon. And once it's done, we'll seal it up, make sure there's no dupes in with it, and we've already got a liquid pipe and a power wire in there. So we can pump it out, and we've got power in there. And all of that, think about the amount of plastic you could make. That's steam turbines. You've got steam turbines right there, more than enough. All without scalding any dupes. A little bit of heat stroke was the worst we got. We didn't even have to put anyone in a hospital bed. Uh, but no, 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 we're getting distracted. I always get distracted. Our plan was to put in a little mini base here and do up enough uh, copper ore. Copper. Uh, was it 11 pieces? Yeah, we'll, we'll do another 11 pieces of that. Do up enough copper so that we can actually put one together correctly. Now, how do I design this so it's nice, compact and efficient for four dupes? That is what I'm going to have as a mini base. We're going to have our dining hall up here, bathrooms below it, sleeping quarters below that, cooking facilities just off to the right, though... Oh, wait. They're going to need to be able to access this. We're going to have our little food storage there. Won't make more sense when it's done, I suppose. And that... Yeah, that's what we're going to be mostly finished as. Oh, and we're getting in the porta pod right now. Reason being, we can start printing stuff here, like maybe, hopefully, some food or something like that. That would be nice. Our first activation over here is an interesting one. It's a poke shell spawn. Uh, we want to send those home. Um, that, will allow, that will allow us to get our hands on, well, a lot more lime, which will allow us to make a lot more steel. Though, how is our, steel, our lime reserves looking over here? Oh, wow, we have 480 kilos of lime. Um, excellent. Yeah, we did smash up all the fossils and all the eggshells over here, but I still think we're printing this poke shell. We'll have to wrangle it up and send it somewhere, 
Can't leave it hanging around there, otherwise the moment an egg drops it'll go crazy. Hmm. We should set up somewhere to dump them. Let me think for a second. What we'll do here is, once we get a poke shell egg shows up on the map at some point, we will dump all poke shell eggs in here. And then we'll just make sure that no one can get into this section. If no one's allowed in, then... Actually, we'll just let them out. If no one can get near them, they'll just drop it off at the top and the poke shells will stay down there. Every so often we can go in and rip them out or put in an auto sweep or something to collect them up. But, where were we? Yes, uh, we gotta get this finished first. To try and get our kitchen completely finished, we're going to need a mechatronics engineer. And skills-wise, even with all of the precautions we took, that's a little bit expensive. We're on, uh, what, 12 of 13 morale? You know what, let's give them a hat as well, though. They, they, we, we can't have them running around without hats. Though, Fruit Loops, you know what, Fruit Loops, you're going to be our griller as well. We're getting someone onto the grilling, the reason being, well, oh, how do I explain this? We get a lot of meal lice in, and the meal lice normally just sits there until it goes off. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have the meal lice cooked up and turned into pickled meal. And then the, this auto sweeper here will dump the pickled meal into the conveyor loader, and then it'll end up down here in our little vacuum storage section. Simple. If we just had, say, only tried to store the meal lice, the meal lice, we'd end up trying to put it in here, and then our duplicates would take it back out of here, and it would end up in an infinite loop. We sort of want to transmute it into something else so that our duplicates can bring it to this location, at which point it gets changed into something else so that it can stay in the chute until they want to eat it. We will, of course, have to make a, a few changes just to get it started up, but that is fine. Let's see. There... Oh, why are you... Oh, yes, yes. We are going to... See, this here can't access that section. So we're going to get all cooking ingredients and edible in here for now. We'll make that a priority six. We'll change everything here to a priority one. All that stuff will get brought over there and we'll sort it once it's in. Very straightforward again. We're going to grab all the cooking ingredients here. We don't care about them. What we care about, sorry, is edible. That's the one. So, well, we're not going to be making any barbecue or bog jellies or anything like that here. But let's just take all the things that would be, could potentially be made here at some point, if ever. You'll notice here I've included a bunch of stuff we don't have access to, uh, but pickled meal is the main one. Now, what should happen is, oh, we'll change this, that's on level 6, we'll change this to level 7. Now what'll happen is this will pick them all up out of the fridge and dump them down there. Uh, but there's more than one thing we have to do. We have to make sure that they don't get put back in again. For example, the muckroot there, that's going to get, see, Fruit Loops is just picking them up and putting them right back into the fridge again. So we have to get all the cooked foods and unselect them here. Oh, just as they start to tuck in here, you'll see that Keymaker's about to pile into it. Like, they're going to eat the whole jar. You, you, know, you know what, never mind. Fruit Loops here, you'll notice, they can't grab the food out of there. They literally have to get up onto that, that tile up just above it. So you need this little ladder segment there. And there you go. Then they're able to pull it out. It's just the way that mechanic works. It's nice, though. We're able to keep our food in there perfectly safe. That should allow us to keep using, turning all of this meal wood into pickled meal. And we'll store the pickled meal in there. And we don't... I really need to get across here. The cooking into pickled meal doesn't give us any more calories. It's actually a waste of labor. It just allows it to transmute it from one thing to another so that we can slide it in here without ending up in some sort of infinite food loop. But that is going to be our new base. Uh, we just need to get rid of some of the old stuff and bridge... Oh, the water, that was it. The last thing we're missing here is the water. We're going to bring in water from down here. That would... Wow, it's... Oh, I slowed it down a lot. Uh, water comes up, goes in, and we're going to just start priming all the toilets. Then we'll have to have an excess water. Hmm, I think we'll bring it out as clean, and we'll turn it into bristle blossoms. We can put a couple of bristle blossoms either side here to sink our excess water into. Plan here, very simple. Uh, okay, there shouldn't be clean water there. There should be polluted water coming out of the toilets. It goes through here, it gets sieved, and then any excess water gets sent down here. And as you'll see, yeah, it just flows right by. And then it's going to head down here and get turned into, well, fed into what will be bristle blossoms. Do we have, yes, we do have blossoms on this. Excellent. We'll just stick those there. And if we check the temperatures on those, they can survive 5 to 30 C. We are at, damn it, wrong one. Uh, we're at 22 C. So we've got plenty of, uh, plenty of leeway for now. That will just add to our food supplies. It's not the biggest thing in the world. The main reason for that is just to soak up all that excess water we're going to get out of the toilets. And that, that, that's our base sorted. We can uh, deconstruct this. Next step up will be harnessing the ethanol and sending it back to base. There's a big pile there. Where is... Oh, and I want to clean this whole area up. With all of that done, and a little bit of deconstruction of some glass panels, or background glass panels, we now have 800 kilos of glass, and it's time to put in some solar. Once we get solar in here, this whole place is... Well, 
all self-sustained except for maybe heat and dirt. Eventually the dirt will, will run out, though there's just oodles of this stuff here. Let's double check how much dirt we've got. I if I recall. Uh, dirt we've got 118 tons. Yeah, so as long as we cut this down to a one dupe population, it should be plenty for a, a very, very long time to come. Now comes the very delicate task of just boring out into space and losing a whole bunch of oxygen. Uh, we sort of want to get up a little bit so we don't interfere with the top layer while we put down our solar panels. We'll put our solar panels... you know what? Let's keep them in line with our four tile high rooms. Why not? I mean, if you're going to do something, go whole hog. That means we're going to want to put in some background plates and a few bits and bobs here. Now we just have to get this built really quickly before we vent a whole bunch of oxygen into space. Oh, that can go. Turns out there is already backing there. Yeah, I think this will be fine. We'll lose a little bit of oxygen, but it's not the worst thing in the world considering how much we've got in reserve. All our dupes are just having a quick smoko while, you know, our oxygen vents out into space, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not bitter. Same plan as the last base. We've got uh, well, solar panels up here. They're tied in via a solid heavy watt wire. Heavy watt wire plugs into the batteries. The batteries store the power for day and night cycle. And then we have a transformer to regulate the power to a one kilowatt that we feed back onto our grid. Once that's up and running, we'll disconnect those coal generators. We won't need them anymore. The temperature at the top of the map here is not quite as chilly, but it's cold enough we're going to get by. I don't think we'll have any problems with heat for uh, at least a few hundred cycles. That buys us plenty of time. Now, a uh, telescope. I think we're going to have to bring in uh, a researcher and... Oh, blueprint. I think that iron would do well back on the home. We're going to have uh, much need for this after we get our hands on some reed fiber. We're going to be needed constructing an industrial arena and it's or industrial brick and it's going to require a bunch of refined metals. And there goes in the last... One second. There goes in the last solar panel and we're done. That should be the end of that. Oh, and we better bring over our researchers so that they can clear out the telescope area. Our star map in this area is, well, it's looking not too filled out. So let's get someone in here sooner rather than later. Red Rover, Red Rover, please send Travaldo over. Uh, or is it, what's the name? Weaver, sorry. Weaver over. And we're done. Right, they're in there. They should immediately hop onto the telescope and that'll start uh, exploring space around this planetoid. Nice. Then we just got to go to, to Parioto. Never mind. No, we'll worry about that in a minute. Uh, down here, we're going to plug this wire in. Where is it? Oh, I haven't done it yet. Okay, this will go along here. It will go into this section. It will plug into that. That will pump uh, ethanol down here. That ethanol will get pumped into the supply of this end of the terraporter input. Then when it comes out the far end, it will be over here it will get dumped into this liquid reservoir. That liquid reservoir is going to get hooked up to a petroleum generator, and that petroleum generator is going to spit out a lot of carbon dioxide that then we can then dump into a rocketry program to go explore the third planetoid, or to Toparioto, whatever. Gold, volcano, aluminum volcano, hydrogen vent, hot polluted oxygen vent, uh, forests, which have trees and pips, which we want, and marshland, which has those reed fibers, which we so desperately, desperately need. Reed fiber, I, I never realized how much of a crutch reed fiber is in this game. It makes the game just so much easier. Anyway, let's uh, get this all filled in. Oh, and make sure none of that breaks. And the ethanol flows. This is pretty much the only reason you come to this planet. Well, that and hatches. Getting hatches out of this planet and... One second, that should be removed. Hatches and ethanol. The ethanol for the carbon dioxide, hatches for the stone hatches that you can use to make coal, and I suppose, well, telescope usage is not the worst either. Weaver here, what's your science at? Still only two? Two base. Okay, well, you're going to need to keep working, buddy. You're going to need to keep working a lot. What are you doing? Two pieces done. Keep going. All right, uh, just uh, let's give this ten minutes while everyone catches up with a few things, and we're going to have the rest of the team start demolishing this map out. There's no point keeping any of this, whatever you may call it, environment. So maybe we went a little bit normal on this one, as in we just cored out the whole area. Everything from top to bottom, we cored the lot out, took out everything we wanted. We've sorted the uh, salt water over here, clean water over here, and the ethanol over here. To just move them around, all I've done is, well, stick a pitcher pump into anything I find and put a bunch of bottle emptiers above whatever area it is. That allowed us to just move everything quickly and efficiently. Well, I don't know about efficiently, but it moved them quickly enough. 
We're going to get ready to put in a rocket section here as well. And just as a sort of a design choice, this is going to be the lowest point in this base. And we sort of filled in this area over here. That way, all that gas should sort of flow down here and collect in this spot. We're going to take all that carbon dioxide, feed it into rockets, and any of that chlorine that managed to make it down here, we're going to end up feeding that to salt vines. Dasha, salt vines? Yeah, those ones. So that should get rid of our chlorine problems. And we managed to squeeze this down a little bit and cap off that. That, that right there, that has to be a sulfur geyser. The reason I know that is because we were able to place this across here. If this was a, a polluted oxygen vent, like say this one over here, or chlorine gas vent, like this one over here, you couldn't do that. Uh, one second. I know it's a bit cheaty, but I, I just sort of wanted to wall across that so I could move the gas along. So you can't wall in across these sections. You could, the block won't stick. It will stick here, but it won't allow you to stick anywhere else. The reason being, there's something literally in the way. It's just one of those ways you can tell what's underneath the geyser without looking. You really shouldn't use it, but I kind of wanted to stretch that across. Anyway, uh, down here, just let me finish this off and we'll be good to move on to the next planet. With the bottom of this all cleaned out and ready to go, we're going to put in a bit of a gas pump here and some gas pipe element sensors. If we sense any carbon dioxide down here, I'll copy it over to those two, that'll send out green signals. Uh, we've got an AND gate, so if the two of them are sensing carbon dioxide, it'll turn on the gas pump. As well as that, I'm putting down a bunch of refrigerators, namely to dispose of all the annoying uh, nosh beans. There's a whole bunch of nosh beans that keep going off. Where's the best one? Wait a minute, where'd it go? Ah, it's this one over here. Yeah, this one's halted because of body temperature, but I think it's actually growing out of a copper tile, which sort of impressive. Uh, I don't know where it's getting its nutrition, but you got to give it to him. There's the power wire laid that will take a little bit of time to construct, and then the gas pipe will go all the way up here. Hops across a bit, not too spaghetti-like, and then we're going to dump a bunch of gas tanks up here. We're not going to have that much carbon dioxide, but you know what? It's always best to build more than you need. Then we're going to, once that's finished, we're going to stick our rocket right there. With that final gas reservoir in place, it's time to put in our rocket. Uh, it should be fairly simple. Rocket platform, we'll stick it up there in that section. And the reason I'm sticking it up there is they have a, a bit of a rocket exhaust. It's nine tiles. Yeah, so that should... Uh, I put in one extra tile just in case I'm calculating that wrong. But we should be fine, probably. Uh, insufficient resources? Hell no. Uh, perfect. Uh, once that's built, we'll put ourselves together a rocket, and then we're going to fly everyone home. Uh, we could send them through the teleporter, but it, that's really slow. It'd take, we'd have to do them one at a time. And we have to pick who we're going to leave behind. Someone's got to stay here and maintain this place. Oh, and also fill all the containers. There's going to be a giant sweep command to shoot, and there'll be one person left here. Their only job will be to run like about five meal wood to keep themselves fed. All their oxygen will be provided from the other planet. So they'll be able to feed themselves, and then they're just going to run around and... Well, stock the place, and uh, we've set up the, an infinite drop-off point, an infinite storage point. We're going to drop it all down here. Oh, and before we leave, we should stick ourselves in an auto-sweeper. Uh, yeah, we'll put it in about there. And that auto-sweeper's job will be, when we decide what we want, we'll just turn on the this oh, conveyor loader. The auto-sweeper will be able to pick it up and dump it into the conveyor loader for us. That's assuming our duplicate that's running around doing all the, well, putting all the stuff here manages to get it all there in time and there we go a perfectly oh my god is this a colony i i think yeah we've just become a, a, a one of those imperial powers yeah it's not good it's not good a uh, carbon dioxide engine because currently they're still the best of all of them so we'll go with carbon dioxide engine on top of that what are we going to want uh well i suppose we don't really care to be honest at the moment we can just go with the solo space for module we don't we're just sending this back home we'll stock it up there to send it on to the next planet yeah, I think that's all we need. Eh. Oh, we might also need to put in some... Uh, where is it? Yeah, some gas piping. Uh, that can go up there. Nope. Boom. Oh, and in case you're wondering, those tiles are made out of obsidian. I was going to make it out of sandstone, then I caught myself. Just in case, because I'm pretty sure this will get hot enough at some point. If we keep using this size, it will get hot enough to melt that obsidian. Yeah, I think four solar panels here are going to provide more than enough power to keep this place going for a long, long time. What the hell just happened? Did all of the... Oh, wow. It really did take out all the gas. That was uh, very efficient. We're going to put ourselves down here at plant, though. Let's see. Where's that gas at? All right. All right. We're going to get a hydroponics tile. Or is it not farm tile should do fine. We're going to rotate it downwards facing. And we're going to put one there. Let's say one there. And we're going to put some dash of salt vines in them. And the dash of salt vines will start eating up that chlorine. So that way we should have a way of dealing with carbon dioxide and a way of dealing with the chlorine. And there we 
go. Uh, growth halted atmosphere, that's fine. But at some point, well, <laughs> at some point the chlorine will intersect with them. Uh, though it's going to be hard to tell, isn't it? Ah, there we go. You can see it actually growing just a little bit, so it's soaking up some of that chlorine. And we leave them down here long enough, much like the, the Paku in the tank of polluted water. They'll eventually soak up all that chlorine. It's just a nice little way to get rid of it. We've already sent some of those seeds back home as well, so we can do the same back on our home planet. And yeah, we don't care about any of this, do we? Ooh, another rancher. Nope, nope. We don't need a second rancher. One was more than enough. Well, we'll deploy that back home. I think for now, we'll wait until this is finished. Ah, we will wait until this is finished and we can launch our astronauts home. We're just going to cram all four of them into one of them. It's only going to be a very, very short trip. If you check the star map. Yeah, just one, two, three. Oh, we should probably go home and set them up a rocket return silo so they can land somewhere. We already smashed up a bunch of iron ore or something to that effect. Let me see here. Where are we going to put our rockets? So it looks like rocket platforms are a bit like solar. They don't need something to sit on. Or maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to do some testing on that in the background. But for now, once that's done, we are going to get our... Well, we're going to get our pawns over here and launch them back. We have got a very, very basic module here. This thing is... Well, have a look. Yeah, it's... There's, there's not even food, no nothing, it's just oxygen. That's all it is. They should hopefully be able to get back very, very quickly anyway. Which reminds me, we should probably skill up one of them. Uh, Fruit Loops. We'll skill up Fruit Loops and we'll get them to launch. Well, we'll give them another day or two. There's a little bit of sweeping up that needs doing. Oh yeah. Um, we'll let them do a little bit of sweeping first and then we'll sort it out. Despite all the fun we had here sorting this place out, everyone is up for the day. That means they're as close to as well rested and fed as they're going to get. We are going to chuck them on this. Oh. Wait, no. Skills first. Uh, where's Fruit Loops? They're going to be our rocket pilot. Uh, we're going to get Fruit Loops into rocket... Oh, can we afford that? You know what? I do believe we can. Just about. So they get rocketry piloting. That will allow us to fly home at the highest speeds possible, I presume. Uh, once they've got their... Uh, once they've done their little animation... Nice. We'll load up the rocket and get everyone home. All right, everyone, change the crew, like the whole lot of you. We're going to literally abandon this colony. Well, not quite. We're going to send these four off in the rocket. And once we do, crew may not leave the module. Non-crew must exit. Right, auto. Yeah, we're going to get all four of them in there. Once we do, we're going to launch this home. And there we go. How's the interior looking? There's all four of them. Perfect. Why are you wiping your feet? Oh, they probably stepped in some carbon dioxide on the way in. Yeah, one of the problems of this place. All right, uh, let's launch you home. I think that's everyone on board. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. What's the warnings? Cargo loading incomplete. That's because we don't have any cargo. That's fine. Launch. And off they go. Right, we check the stair map. Should be on their way back. How long are they going to take? Point 0.2 of a cycle. Once they get there, they land. Once they're landed, we'll be sorted. Uh, we just need to get someone in here to start tending the place. Now, when I say tending the place, I mean we are sending Travaldo over. Uh, Travaldo is going to teleport over to that side. And Travaldo has been picked very carefully for their usefulness. Uh, the reason being Travaldo here, if we check out their skills... Where are you, Travaldo? They can grill. They've also got uh, improved carrying and they've got research. So for a little bit of... Uh, well, you don't actually need the research, to be honest. This just means they can cook. So they can cook up any of the meal wood and turn it into pickled meal. They can also harvest any crops. So these bristle blossoms, we've actually been harvesting them and sending them back through the gate. We'll come back to that. They can also harvest these mealwoods and cook them up. So they can cook up their own food. Oxygen is provided from off planet. All they're going to do is be running around and cleaning this place up. That's pretty much it. Once we, until we get into oil, they're, that's their only purpose, their only reason for their existence. They don't even need to dig. It has all been done. The, uh, the super team have taken care of this entire asteroid, except for the oil biome, which we will be back to do later. I think that's a, I think that's a good method of dealing with things. Anyway, we're going to let this crew come home, and once they're home, we're going to have to reconfigure the rocket, and then we're going to send them over to Tapariotu. You know what? We're probably going to do about three rockets and send them all over over there. Though there is one other thing we need to do on this uh, on this planetoid. We need to set up carbon dioxide, and to do that, well, we have all the ethanol here. We've been pumping ethanol over from the other planet. In fact, all the ethanol on the other planet is already queued up to be sent. As you can see, there's a giant pool of ethanol here, and it is being pumped into the transporter. So we are sorted for carbon dioxide for a very, very long time to come. And has that rocket landed? Yes, it has. That way we can... Yeah, we're going to change the crew. Everyone out. Everybody out. Come on. A lot of you. 
Right, did they actually? Oh, never mind. They got it already. That's fine. We'll actually disable this for now. We don't want anyone coming back in here for a while until we finished a few outstanding chores. All right. Oh, and we better give them all back beds and stuff. All of them have been assigned their correct beds. Everything is just about good to go, except there's one thing I kind of been putting on the long finger, so to put to the side, berry sludge. Now, the reason I'm picking berry sludge here is it requires sleep beet grains and bristleberry. Now, the bristleberry we're actually getting off planet and we're shipping it back, though we'll make our own on site soon enough. Uh, the sleep wheat grain. Oh god, the sound of that. Can you hear that? I don't know if I want to eat something that sounds like that when it's being made. But, um, yeah, we're getting the wild sleep wheat grain around here, so we have collected a lot of it. And why is there some still left there? Why has no one picked that up? Oh, damn it, ladder must have got. Mm, some ice must have melted somewhere, so we lost access to that section. But we've been collecting all of the sleep wheat grain around the map, so there is actually a butt ton of it here. Where is it? We have 36, 19, 775 sleep wheat grain. All we need is bristleberry, and we can start churning out this berry sludge. Now, where is it? Berry sludge here is amazing, because if you notice here, there's no going off section. If we say click on the cooked fish, you can see it's fresh. If you try and click on, say, the berry sludge here, does not have any of those options. The reason is berry sludge cannot go off. It is the perfect space food. We could just dump that onto a, a module and the astronauts will never run out of food. Well, their food will never go off. So we don't even need to chill it. We don't need to power a fridge. We don't need to do anything or care about it ever going off. We just dump on berry sludge and we can cook it and grow it ourselves. All right. And then up here, you'll see we've got a few rockets. When we're going to this planet, we're not doing the half ass method of before. We're taking three rockets all at once and we're sending over three, maybe four duplicates. I'm going to have to think about that in the background. And we're going to go colonize the planet all at once. As in, we're going to fly over three rockets, dump one down, dump two down. That will give us enough metal to make a landing pad. Then once we've landed, once we've got the landing pad up and running, we'll land the spacefarer module. Uh, the reason for the spacefarer module will be it's large enough to actually provide a decent sized interior. As in, no matter how bad the conditions on the planet are, we can land the first two, well, you can send in the trailblazer modules first. That will allow us to build a rocket landing pad. Then we'll be able to use that rocket landing pad to land this rocket, which will have enough oxygen and food to keep the duplicates alive for uh, 10, 20 cycles. Well, but I'll have to do some thinking in the background. And that means we should have a perfect safety getting there and surviving for the early game while we set up. No need for sending down robots or anything like that. We're just going to send in the A-team straight away. Anyway, I am way over budget here. Uh, today was all about getting this planet completely squared away, and I think we've done a solid job on that. And next up, we'll be squaring away the third planet. And the third planet, considering we can send everyone straight away, I think we'll get through the third planet pretty quickly next episode. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.